Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nubraids and in today's video, uh, it's the second video today, of course, we did our first video all about Primal Shards having arrived in the game, which was definitely, uh, it was a fairly negative video, things not looking too hot at the moment with the Primal Shards. Well, here's some good news. The good news is that Sun Wukong, um, the current free login legendary champion, who just has blown me away in Arena for how powerful he is, we're looking at him in Hydra today, and guess what? Great news in advance, slight spoiler, but Sun Wukong, he's absolutely fantastic for Hydra as well. He actually ended up being even almost a little bit better than I expected, honestly. So let's take a look. What makes him so good for Hydra? Well, really, it's all about his A3, actually. Now you see us. A three turn cooldown, AoE attack. Now this is the key thing, before attacking. You will steal all buffs from all enemies and then put block buffs on them for two turns. Why is this so strong? Well, because this goes on, these effects happen before attacking. There's no such thing as a weak hit for these effects, right? Replacing these effects, he might as well be Void Affinity. And indeed for Hydra, it does mean that you can do things like you can steal buffs and place block buffs through Poison Cloud on Hydra, which is just absolutely amazing. So for free, every single one of you now has a three turn cooldown, affinity friendly block buffs. On top of that, stealing all buffs is actually great for Hydra as well. If some buffs get stolen uh, or, you know, uh, reflect damage goes up or increase attack goes up on Head of Wrath before you can get that block buffs out, Wukong gives you that backup to go in and to steal it away, which is just exceptionally useful. So this move is just amazing. Now his A1 has a chance to stun. That is useless for Hydra, but it does okay damage. His A2, it can turn somebody into a sheep. It can do surplus damage if a target is killed. Can't sheep the Hydra. You actually also can't kill the Hydra, right? Decapitating a head doesn't count as killing it. So the Hydra never gets killed. It gets decapitated and then a new one comes in, but it never counts as them actually dying. So this doesn't work either. However, this is still a three turn cooldown, 50% ignore defense hit. It actually does hit pretty hard, so that's quite nice, especially if you combo combo it with something like Hex and you hit a decapitated head. You can do good damage and splash pretty good damage as well. He's got a speed aura for Arena, doesn't help us. Then actually his passive is quite nice, like reviving him with turn meter after he's killed. You can do something like not bring a reviver in, and even if you've got your Sun Wukong built to be pretty squishy, he's just going to revive himself in Hydra. So, so long as the rest of your team is tanky, you can actually have him, you know, built for damage, pretty squishy, and he's going to stay alive because of this. Well, not stay alive, but keep undeading himself, which is always nice. Um, how do I have him built? It's the same style of build that I used in my guide on Wukong. Um, and I definitely stand by that. This has been a build that has really served me well in Arena so far. And I'll show it to you here today in Hydra. Not the only way you can build him, but basically what I've done, I put him in lethal, so ignoring defense, and I've built him to hit hard with good speed. So we've got him with good speed. 235 is solid speed. Um, and I would want him to be high speed for Hydra. 100% crit rate. We've got him with good crit damage, 257, and 5,000 attack as well. So good attack, good crit damage, etc. And then accuracy, I have him with excuse me, with 385 right now. I actually got an extra 30 uh, due to our double legendary event and actually being able to, to expand our faction guardians for skinwalkers because of that. Um, for Hydra, you can adjust it. So let me actually get this up for you guys so you guys know exactly how to do it yourselves. Here we go. Um, so what I would recommend, oh, I need to turn on display cap. There we go. Uh, we'll be coming over to hellhades.com. Come over here into the raid stages tool. Now there is a bit of a trick to this. Come into Hydra. I think we're rotation two right now. Let me double check that for you. Um, check your Hydra rotation. Uh, sorry, five. We're, we're two on the test server. Sorry, my bad. Rotation five. Um, I'm, I'm doing this, for example, on Brutal. We're going to be checking out Brutal today. And then you want to look at their resistance, right? So for example, uh, here you can see that uh, the Head of Suffering has 255 resistance. So to be pretty much as consistent as possible or as efficient, you want 280 accuracy to actually be able to beat that. Now, on top of this, if Head of Suffering is alive, add 50 resistance to each head, okay? So this is, I, I would nearly always build around this, right? So basically take all of these numbers and add 50 to it. So Suffering does have the most resistance, so it's 280, 
accuracy is what I want, but then plus 50. So I'm looking for 330 accuracy for brutal. And you could do the same things. Nightmares around 400. Um, you can see come down here hard is like 215 plus 50. So I want 265 accuracy for hard. If you're only doing normal, I'll help you out just for the sake. 165 plus 50 is, uh, what's that? 215. That's not too bad. That should be fairly doable with an accuracy banner or something like that. You should be able to reach that even with no great haul. So getting the accuracy you need for Wukong should be doable with that. Should be something you can do. Um, but yeah, so these were the stats that I built him with. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good. What? Uh, oh, also the mastery to go alongside it. I broke these all down in my Wukong guide, but obviously Helm Smasher stacking with the Ignore defense on his A2 and with the ignore defense of lethal we could potentially ignore 100 defense and that's where the massive damage comes from is on his a2 in arena uh so fairly arena focus like the first hit on each enemy um reducing the cooldown of a skill these things are not going to help us at all in hydra uh ignoring shields not really going to help us much in hydra um but that's okay i'd say the important thing for hydra would be coming down the support tree now there's an alternative way you can go if you're building him purely for hydra you could totally go for war master instead that's fine and it's interesting a couple of different ways so i mean let's put it up in a notepad so it's a bit easier to see um my fave build equals hybrid damage plus accuracy um let's say hydra only i would go for pure uh accuracy speed and resistance that's what i would do um and mm, Probably reflex set, honestly. Or curse. This is why. So probably a little bit different from what you were expecting. So going into it, I was thinking um, I would probably be running Wukong in like a relentless set, give him as many turns as possible. I actually don't think that's too important. The reason being, I really want relentless with Ugo. Okay, let me show you this in comparison. Ugo is one of his big competitors. Ugo, the other, I think, very accessible, best in class block buff. If she comes in with decreased defense and block buffs, she can put Leech on her A1, but it's not 100%, and she's got a great heal on her A3. Ugo has like three moves that you really want to be firing off as much as possible. So she's perfect for Relentless, those extra turns. And she's really tanky as well. Um, so that works really well. I actually don't think it's as important with Wukong. The reason I prefer uh, Reflex would be to make him as consistent as possible, just getting his cooldowns down more so he can spam these moves more because his A1 is pretty rubbish. Um, so that's a great option. Cursed Set is absolutely fantastic for him because then he could be bringing Hex for your team. First Set, right? You have a chance to place Hex. That could be great, right? Um, just spamming that out. Uh, but the reason I'm saying to build him with high accuracy, speed, and resistance, now this is the difference, and the reason we're not using Relentless, is because he is stealing buffs with his A3, you could actually get him to be a pretty good, not, not super good, but decent mischief tank. All the same, right? Run him as the slowest member of your team, but still fast. So you'd have him still quick, but slightly slower than everyone else. Give him a blood shield accessory like I have here. Uh, probably put him, I had to switch him out of, uh, I had Lightning Cage on, but that's an extra buff for Mischief. I switched him into Phantom Touch for just damage, yeah? Um, put him with Lightning Cage, so it's an extra buff uh, to help Mischief target him more. And yeah, then, look, if some buffs go through, it's fine. He steals them back, and he becomes an amazing Mischief tank with his high resistance. All that sort of stuff. And by the way, resistance, you do the same thing. Come over here, you want Head of Mischief. He has four, well, we're going into Brutal. So he has three, four, five accuracy. You want at least 450 resistance. I'd even go up to like more like 500, right? Just to be even safer. You can go higher than 450. Um, so really stacking a lot. That could be a great way to build them as well. If I was building them for Hydra only, for pure Hydra, that is probably what I would do. Because um, it's kind of hard to get increased attack to boost his damage in Hydra. So I'd probably be running, personally, I'd probably run Cursed Set. And I'd run him with high accuracy speed resistance, have him be a mischief tank, a block buff and strip buff champion that's also bringing hex. And that, that could be pretty, pretty decent, right? That could be pretty decent. Um, but that's a good one. Uh, you could go like a support build, which would be just uh, super high uh, accuracy and speed, which I've seen some people do as well. So for arena, especially late game arena, where you've got like amazing damage dealers you don't really need him for damage you can just build him to be a polymorph machine and a buff stripping machine so really high speed really high accuracy that's going to work great for hydra too he's not going to do any damage 
but he's still going to work super well for Hydra. So these are sort of your options. Like I said, the Hydra only one is a niche build. It's not good for Arena. It's not good for, well, really anywhere else. My favorite build, the Hybrid, is good everywhere. He's a good damage dealer. He's good crowd control, but he's going to be a bit limited on crowd control. Or you go full crowd control, uh, which I think is probably not quite as good for Hydra. The high accuracy, like for Arena Endgame, you might build him with like 800 accuracy or something stupid that's not needed obviously for hydra it's overkill so that's not great for hydra either but um like there's there's compromises either way so sort of three key builds i would look at for him for for hydra uh basically again for the arena support build you're probably going in for eagle eye which is totally unnecessary for hydra it's a waste but he's still going to perform pretty well let's uh jump into some hydra runs let me show you uh well first of all We'll come back to this. this is the team I actually used. Okay. But if I was to come in um, and if we were to build a team, let's build it right here below this cadaver team that I never actually built on live servers. I, I really expect them. They, they've, they're they saying they've, they're going to nerf it. There is a nerf incoming, but they've really put it off. I will be honest. I do not understand um, why they didn't just come in like week one, go, oh yeah, this cadaver thing is dumb. Uh, we'll just cap his damage to 10% of a Hydra's max HP. Bam, done. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why they didn't do that, but they haven't. Uh, so now I feel a little bit bad for my clan because I was expecting them to nerf it because it's so easy and obvious, but they did. They didn't. Anyway, let's see. So let's build a team with Wukong. I'm going to put in Newt for a second because Wukong, he doesn't have a good aura. You wouldn't put him in the lead. Um, uh, let's, uh, let's just leave, let's leave something dumb in the lead. There we go. Reliquary Tender because I think we'll keep the lead spot open. What would I be putting in with Wukong? I think we'll, we'll build a fairly accessible team, um, but that's still pretty good. That will do you well on like probably hard or brutal if you've been playing for a while. I'd say Mithrala for me is like the big one to put with him. If he's in this damage type build, Mithrala is ideal. She brings you increased attack and hex. So that hex really amps up that single target damage he gets from his A2 and the increased attack helps him to hit harder. She's also going to just help him stay alive and your team in general. So Mithrala is perfect. We're going to need a decreased defense. We're not using an Ugo or something like that. So I, again, we're looking fairly later in the game here. I'd be putting a Lydia in with him just to give you an idea. Decreased defense, we can increase speed. We're going to want to decrease speed as well. With Lydia, I really do like to run uh, Inquisitor Shemael. I think that's a really good idea because he's removing all the, the fears. And Lydia is with her A1. Whenever uh, an ally is feared, she counterattacks with her A1. So she's going to keep fearing herself. So I really, really like Shemael in there as well um what else would we put in this team we definitely need to decrease speed that would be important and um uh, so i would put in probably mother side belt now this would be probably the best option now it's not super accessible to be fair <laughs> it's not super accessible but she's got the decrease speed a1 that combos brilliantly with shamael uh because he's boosting her turn meter with his passive and she can just spam this out and get really good value and then I had a, I, I did this already. I've forgotten. Oh, of course, we want a mischief tank, derp, derp, derp. So let's put in a, an amazing budget option mischief tank, Skiramis. I think that's going to be perfect here. Skiramis, he comes in with provoke, couple of buffs. So he will mischief tank. He'll protect us. Even if Wukong steals some buffs, hopefully Skiramis will still mischief tank. He brings decreased attack to help keep us alive. His A1 doesn't do anything, but he's going to be just perfect here. I think that's a really solid team. You've got good damage from Wukong. And from uh, Shamail, Mother Cybele even does some, and we've got the Hex from Mithrala. Um, we've got decreased defense weaken. We've increased speed, decreased speed. We've got block buffs. We're dealt with the fear. Uh, sorry, I'm in the way. We've dealt with fear. We've dealt with torment. We've got a lot going on. Let's jump over. Let me show you a little bit of this run so you can see it in action here. I actually, when we started recording a little bit late, that's okay. But I did this run up to the one key in Brutal to sort of see how we perform. Let me actually up the speed a little bit. That's in a few teams, but this would be a great, I think, fairly budget, later sort of game team. And hopefully me walking you through the sort of the th uh, team building synergies would be a good idea. What could I do to improve this team more? Some easy changes? Well, uh, like if you're even more late game, obviously Krisk would be a big upgrade to Skiramis. There we go. Krisk, that makes it much better. Uh, Nekmothar would be much better than Mother Cybele. So that pushes it a bit further. Um, they'd probably be the big ones to change. And there you go. Then you've got, again, an extremely, extremely good team um, coming in there. If you got Necmo bringing you increased speed, you don't need the increased speed from Lydia. You could bring in something like a Venus. I don't have that, but Venus has the AoE decreased defense weakened, same as Lydia. But Venus, uh, 
uh, brings in AoE HP burn. So then you'd have AoE burn with Venus, you'd have Necmothar um, giving you leech, uh, decrease attack, Krisk giving you all the Krisk stuff, and that would be an incredibly good team with uh, Wukong in there. Um, so that would be super strong, super strong team. Uh, I did realize when I started running this team, and this is one of the fun things I wanted to talk about, you know, uh, like some people like to say I'm the Hydra guru, but I tell you, I'm, I do some stupid stuff sometimes. So for example, I built up this team and I was feeling really good about it and I went into the run and I realized in this run, there is no healing in this team. Not really. Now, Mother Cybele can flip HP with someone and give herself continuous heal. So we could potentially save people with her. She can also do revive on death, but we don't have any actual healing. So that's a problem with this exact team right here. Uh, put in Nekmothar, he gives you leech and you're good. It's fixed, right? Um, but it is a problem. You can get some leech. If you kill Head of Wrath, I think he's got a chance to put out leech when you decapitate him, and that could heal you up. But it's going to be a bit of a problem. And that being said, we will survive just fine. Mithrala is strong enough uh, to make us survive. Plus, Lydia is extending that strength in a bit. So we've got like a lot of increased defense. The Mithrala shield is really good. We're going to be surviving pretty well actually kind of no matter what. So we're going to be just fine and dandy. We're going to make it through, but it is a little bit sketchy. So this team will really struggle against Head of Wrath. We've got decrease attack, but it's not 100% consistent. You might have to rerun it a couple of times if you want to use this exact team. But you've sort of seen how it goes. You've probably seen some Wukong damage hits in there. Let me see how he's going to hit a decapitated head here. He did almost 400,000 damage right there. And that's no increased attack, no decreased defense, nothing on that head. He absolutely smashes them. Like he really does hit hard. So his damage adds up. We came in here. Here we go. 32 million damage total. You see Wukong had 7 million damage. So he's bringing us block buffs and that wonderful consistent utility. But then he's also... Whoop, hang on. I, I forgot. I, did, I, uh, I left it playing. <laughs> 7 million damage, which is great. Mother Cybele did 5 million. Spamming the A1 boosted by Shemael is pretty good. Shemael did do the top damage, almost 9 million. So that's a, a Shemael who is built for damage is this one. I can show you in-game if we jump over. Um, this Shemael, he's built for a lot of damage, okay? So this Shemael has 5.3k attack, almost 300% crit damage. Um, so he's smacking really hard, and he's got two-star phantom touches. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, so he's, he's built it pretty hard. So he is doing more. That will give you a good comparison for Wukong, but Wukong is still doing very respectable damage. And that's obviously all going through Mithrala with the Hex, and that's upping her damage. And in about 10 minutes, we easily one-keyed a Brutal Hydra with this team. It's not perfect, like I said, no healing, but it still works, and it gets the job done, which is uh, just fantastic. Now, if I jump ahead, uh, let me zoom back here. Let me show you my actual run. I tried a couple of different variations as well in between. Um, yeah, like I think this one, oh yeah, we only got 116 million there. So I did it again. I did it on full auto. I didn't touch anything. We did 116 million. And then I ran it again a second time. But this time I was clicking heads when they devoured somebody. Uh, and what we've got with this team, this was a variation on the Brutal team. I've done a video on this before. But we've got Nekmothar. He's giving us the increased speed, decreased speed, leech. Uh, we've got Elva, who's cleansing, giving us backup increased speed um, and also giving us lots of healing. We've got Michinaki. He's bringing us the Hex and decreased defense. So top tier decreased defense and some burns. And we've got Husk for damage and some provokes. We've got provoke set on uh, Nekmothar. So he's bringing some provokes as well. We've got obviously Wukong. And then we've got uh, a Shemael that's not really built for much damage. He's more of a utility Shemael that's in here. High resistance, slow speed. He's a bit of a mischief tank. Will do some damage, but not much. So this is the idea of the team. Um, so I think this is honestly is a pretty solid team. I definitely... Uh, this is my second Shemail because I used the first one for other stuff. The damage one I showed you in that first clip. This is my actual run for this week. Uh, so I need to rebuild this Shemail to do more damage and this team will be stronger uh, because we got Elva for the revive. So we can be very, very safe with it. Um, yeah, honestly, I think this team is pretty solid. Um, you could replace Husk with pretty much any other damage dealer because we're not, you know, playing on manual. Like right there, he provoked. He's going to A1. Head of Decay sometimes. You know, Head of Decay actually unprovoked right there because he got devoured. Um, so yeah, the Husk, I think the Husk's provoke is is very unreliable if you're not going to auto it, uh, sorry, manual it or target him onto the Head of Decay. It's unlikely he's going to target it. So we could pro bring in anybody else and it would work just fine. Uh, any other high damage dealer will do good. And yeah, we could probably switch out Elva for something else, right? Elva 
is not super needed for her revive here. Um, and the increased speed we've got from Nekmo, the healing we've kind of got from Nekmo, and it doesn't matter if Wukong dies, he'll come back. So potentially you could upgrade that. But uh, on the whole, I was really happy with this team, I have to say. So it starts off fairly slow, but it does ramp up. And you can see if we skip on ahead a good bit here to, let's say, 200 turns, you can see the turn limit is coming in. We're up to 122 uh, million damage. So look at that right there. Great thing with this team, we've got two buff strippers, right? Michinaki just removes all buffs, and then Wukong can steal all buffs. So even if some buffs go through, if we fail to lock stuff down, uh, they can just steal them back. They can remove them right back, which is pretty great. Um, so yeah, that's one thing about this team that I actually really, really liked, which is cool. The provoking is definitely a bit inconsistent. Like right here, Mischief kept uh, targeting uh, uh, Nekmothar. So unfortunately, stealing his turn meter and, and limiting his ability to provoke. But we've got good damage overall. Yeah, I have to say, I really like this team. I think it's very consistent. This is an easy, consistent 100 million plus team for Brutal. Um, and like I said, if you're targeting it and with a, a moderate uh, amount of luck, it's easily going to hit over 150 or hit about 150 million if you got similar gear to me. We go on ahead and that's what we did uh, eventually. Took a little while at the end. We got to the point where we were boss turn count like two, 280. So everyone's just getting devoured, you know, like... We've got two cha three champions devoured at the same time. Um, or do we get four at the same time? No, not quite, because he eats one. Okay, Mischief managed to eat somebody before that. But yeah, everyone's sort of getting devoured. I think we did, yeah, 157. Uh, yeah, 157.53 damage total. It's actually easier if I show you in-game. Um, yeah, that's uh, nice. Here, Brutal. So 157.53 million damage. You can see the breakdown uh that's kind of weird why is it saying seven million what am i crazy we did more than seven million what's happening right there that's weird here's the actual damage numbers michinaki did not do seven million that's weird he did 58 million you can see sun wukong did 23 million so in this team he does not have increased attack so he's not getting the full value um yeah he's not getting the full value out of his damage build so this is definitely a team where you could drop the damage build and go for something different and you'd lose probably at least half of that if you gave him war master you'd probably drop down to and, and give him war master and like your support build for arena like high speed high accuracy you probably lose half of this damage um but still i mean the damage build is still giving you maybe 10 plus million damage probably more maybe 13 million damage or something it's giving you a good chunk good chunk of damage overall which is quite nice uh but there you are you see husk with 43 million so yeah, Sun Wukong without increased attack, he's going to be about half of the damage of a husk. If he gave him increased attack, he'd be about three quarters of the damage of a husk for Brutal, which I think is actually really good. Three quarters of the damage of a husk for Brutal, and he's bringing you buff stripping and block buffs. So it's a really good thing to bring to the team, and he doesn't need a reviver, which is nice as well. Uh, this Shamel not built for damage since he is damage is much lower, and um, yeah, there you are. Uh, Nekomothar at 17 million, by the way. So that's sort of how it worked. These were the stats, or the, the builds and the champions and the wrong damage. That's so bizarre. And, oh, I didn't touch on it, but this would give 472 million clash points. So it's not enough quite to get the top chest, but give you the second chest and leave you in a good position to get the top, top chest from the Hydra clash. So as the best thing to do would actually be to come in and to show you their stats right here. So it's um, this team. Oh, no, I can't. I, here we go. I can show you the stats here. Nakmo has these stats. This is including the Hydra bonuses um, from Great Hall. And uh, he's in a Provoke set. Elva is like this. Michinaki is like this. Elva is in Stone Skin, which is just for Arena, so not any use here. Protection, probably be her best set here. Protection set. Um, especially Nine Piece Protection, if you could get that somehow. Uh, Michinaki, he is in Relentless with this one. Uh, he'd be also really good in Provoke to back up Nekmothar Provoke. Wukong, we've talked about. Husk is in just random sets, nothing special. I think mostly Perception to get high accuracy. And then Shamail is in, again, nothing special. I would really rebuild him with much higher damage and make him basically make him squishier. Keep him low speed, but high crit rate, high crit damage, high resistance, and high attack. He can be squishy and die. Elva will revive him. And, and then you've got an even better team that could push above 150 million, I think, for sure, in Brutal. So I think it's a good solid team. But long story short, basically, is Sun Wukong good for Hydra? The answer is absolutely yes. He's actually fantastic. He brings solid damage 
if you build him for damage. I think the awkward thing is getting a good increased attack champion in. If you don't have Mithrala, Arbiter is obviously a good option. Um, from the epics, uh, what's her name? Oh, she's not right here. She's she's in my vault somewhere. Um, uh, the Bannerlord one. This one, Ursula the Mourner. Oh, I don't have any space, but Ursula the Mourner, brilliant Hydra champion, decrease attack, increase attack, and A we revive. Great champion that would go with Sun Wukong very, very well. That will all go in, yeah, very strongly. But yeah, I think he's great. Would I use him instead of Ugo? Well, I actually think that yes, for me in this key, I think that yeah, he's actually probably a bit better than Ugo for this team because you don't have to deal with any affinity problems. He just works, right? So no affinity problems, which is fantastic. Ugo does bring you the backup uh, decreased defense, which is nice, and healing if you need healing. But if you've got a really strong healer like Elva in there, and you don't need it with Wukong. I think, like I said, the problem is getting him to increase attack. That's not very easy for Hydra. Because um, there's not super many really good increase attack champions, I feel, for Hydra. Uh, at least at the moment. So yeah, uh, hopefully this has been useful to you. Uh, a bunch of info. But yeah, great news. Lots of ways you can build Sun Wukong. And he's going to be great for Hydra. I strongly suspect 99% of you watching are going to end up using this champion in some of your keys. Um... Because, yeah, it's just hard to get multiple copies of Ugo. And, yeah, I think Ugo is, like, the next best thing that competes with him that's easily accessible. Like, after that, you're looking at champions like uh, Tuhanarak is uh, probably the sort of the, the step up. She's a Void Lego. And then, obviously, the best block buff champion uh, would be Supreme Galek. Uh, or is it Galek or Gaelic? I can't remember. I think it's Galek. Supreme Galek. Um, but he's obviously, again, Void Legendary. So, yeah, honestly, without Void Legendaries best block buff options. Ugo's still up there, brings a kind of broader utility, but Wukong competes. See you next time, guys. Goodbye.